Hey, what's up, everybody? Hope you guys is having a beautiful, what's today, Thursday? Thursday, okay. Because you know in Kensington, what they say, you don't know what time it is, right? It's hard, right? Or uh, what day it is. Well, we out here while we're brothers and sisters, and I met a very nice young lady. How you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. What's your name? My name's Elena. Hi, Elena. How old are you? 45. Okay, 45. Now, Elena, where are you from originally? Originally from Brooklyn, New York. Oh, I'm from New York, Harlem. Yeah. Yo, New York, Favorite we are- Brooklyn. Brooklyn, okay, she from Brooklyn. Brooklyn, stand up. How long have you been in Kensington now? Um, on and off for 23 years. Wow, that's a long time, right? That's a very long time. So let's go down memory lane before we go any further. How was your childhood like growing up? Um, my dad was an alcoholic. My mom was crippled with arthritis and um, she had a hard time like walking and everything. She couldn't really take good care of herself. And um, my dad was vice president of the printing department of the Bank of New York. And he had a, by the time he had me, he was already retired and was getting a pension. So, um, it was like difficult growing up, like because um, my dad didn't want me to be educated. And if I had any interest in learning anything, he would be like, no, you cannot pay attention to anything. But I have a twin brother and my twin brother, uh, he is actually now like um, in the education department and um, he's a teacher in New York and he's living in the Bronx. Okay. Yeah, and um, we don't talk much anymore, but um, he like kind of like threw me out of his life because of my addiction. I'm so sorry. Yeah. My dad was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. um, my aunt, his sister was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. um, a long line of alcoholics from my dad's side. My mom's side, mental illness and institutions. Wow, I'm so yeah. sorry. So I never really met anybody on my mom's side. Hmm. And my dad, by the time he had me, he was like 50. So wow. he was in World War II. Hmm. Yeah, and um, I feel like I was neglected because um, my dad was running us from different places to different places and then my aunt had tracked us down and she was trying to take me for custody and my dad had no he said no way you you raise dogs i raise children because she couldn't have any kids and uh it was very difficult and like he abused me like emotionally and physically yeah. and all, all types of abuse I had. Um, um, mainly ne neglect though. Yeah. And um, he just didn't know how to take care of us. I'm so sorry that yeah. you was dealt that hand in life. And that's what put a lot of us on this road that we're on right now because of our, our foundation. So do you have any favorite childhood memories you can think of? Um, yeah, I remember when I was really small, um, Whenever I got sick, that's when my dad would take care of me. But, but he would like take care of me, give me like cold medicines and stuff and help me like get better. He would send me to my grandma and my grandma, she was very good at taking care of me. And um, I'm very appreciative for that. Okay. And um, it was difficult though with my dad. I mean, like he he abused my mom, and I had to watch that all the time. Yeah, like that's wild. he he told her that she was he called her fatso, oh, man. and he said you can't even make it to the door because she was crippled with arthritis. Sad. And um, he would just call all women broads and and like he the only person that was a lady was his mother, my grandmother. Everyone else was just abroad. And he was always like hitting on women all the time and like yeah. all that. Yeah, so it was difficult. Well, I'm sorry you grew up in a toxic environment and all the things that you experienced, it's not your fault. Thank the, you. The road that you're on right now is not your fault. 
I'm gonna tell you that society may look down on you and say this is your fault, but no, it's not. You're a victim of circumstances. You was misguided. Yeah, I've been, I don't know how. I've been in countless relationships, like with men that just like abused me verbally, physically, yeah. mentally, in all types of ways. I'm so sorry. That's all the type of guys I seem to find. Yeah. They like cling to me mm. and they're like very like, um, I think they're looking for vulnerability. That's what I've been told. So. I'm looking for somebody to take advantage of. Yeah. And that's not right. You deserve to be happy, you know? And I want you, you to know that you matter, all right? You matter and you Thank are you. love. It's just that the wrong people that ain't see your value, but the right people are seeing your value, okay? Okay. So let's talk about drugs. Let's talk about the first drug you tried. What okay. was it? The first drug I tried was um, <clears throat> pot. And I was like 15 years old. And I really didn't like it because it, it made me feel terrible. Like I would get all paranoid and um, I didn't like the high and I always thought like somebody was gonna like jump up on behind me and like jump me and beat me up and stuff like I had like a lot of paranoia over pot that I was 15 when I right right when and I tried it and, and that was like due to like peer pressure or what how, how did you get involved in friends were smoking friends right and that's, and that's what happened to a lot of us friends we try to fit in with that crowd and join the party, right? Yeah. So after that, what was the next drug you moved on to? I moved on from pot to crack. And how were you introduced to crack? I was introduced by crack um, <clears throat> through a friend of mine's boyfriend. And um, we were out one night and he pulled out the crack and started smoking it. And, and then I smoked with them and then like, then like they, I kept smoking it, and um, <clears throat> we were going to like uh, different places and like partying at different people's houses yeah. and smoking it. And like when I loved when I tried it, I loved it. Like I loved that. Like I loved the energy I got from it. Yeah. But I would come down like very fast mm. and then want more of it. Right, right. So currently out here in Kensington, what all drugs are you struggling with? Um, heroin, powder fentanyl. cocaine. So powder Fet cocaine? Yeah, the fentanyl. Because there's no heroin out here no more. It's no. all clear, right? The yeah, stuff it's that you all fe it's clear. fentanyl, yeah. And, and that stuff's like really strong. Like yeah. I kept passing out when I do it. Like I pass out straight for like 16 hours. Damn. How many bags do you do every day to, make, um, to stay well? To stay well, like at least three or four a day. Okay. Yeah. I, I have heard more from other people. So how do you support your habit? Um, panhandle. Um, I don't know any way I can. Yeah, you do dates and stuff. I've tried dates. Uh huh. And um, it didn't really work out. I got raped oh, like I'm so three sorry. times. Give us a backstory, because we like to put these guys on blast who like to rape women. We like to know if you know their, their, how they look like or the description of their vehicle, so we can help other women. Okay. You want to tell us what you know of those people that raped you? They were usually drug dealers. Yeah. From the area? Yeah. So it's no like cause, it was just walk up? They would just walk up to me, talk to me, and then talk about nothing but sex. and. Like, I would be like, well, I'm not really interested. I have a boyfriend. They're like, so what? And then the one dude pulled me into an alleyway and, like, raped me. Yeah, so I've been raped a couple of times. Not, like, about three times. Yeah. Do you report this to the police or anything? No. Definitely not. Why I just want to forget about it. That you can't forget about something like that. That's traumatizing. Yeah. Like so, things uh -huh. from my childhood, like I always put on the back of my head and like I say I don't remember, but I remember bits and pieces. Mm. Like so, when I lived in New York, I was like born there. Yeah. And there was an explosion in the basement when I was there. And um, all I remember is a big, big explosion and my dad and his friends were, I was down there with my dad and his friends because my dad was the bank, he was working at the bank and he was um, vice president of the printing department. 
and um, his friends were always over and they were always hanging in the basement. I don't know, but I think they were into some criminal activity and um, I just remember an explosion and then looking up at a church and feeling safe afterwards. I remember bits and pieces up until like about six, seven years old. Uh, I know when I came to PA, I couldn't talk. It took me a long time to talk. One of our AML family member, her name is E L L I E Ellie Ellie May, because you Ellie know now I'll be chopping names up. She said that you are a fighter. You are a fighter. And thank you for sharing your story with us. See, you got a lot of beautiful people yeah. who are, you know, have thank empathy you. and compassion. Thank you, Ellie. She said, thank you so much, Ellie. God bless you. So now let's let's talk about 24 hours. What 24 hours in your life look like out here? Um, wake up anywhere. Go find a way to get high. And that's like the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up is get high. Try to find a way to get high, yeah. Yeah, I, I know the struggle. I know I got to make some money so I can maintain. Right, right. It's not easy making money out here, right? No. It's tough. So I see Very you, tough. You got I mean, most people don't even want to give me money. Yeah, because right now, I'm, I, the area that you're in front of is a, is a rehab because I have brought people to this rehab before. Is there a reason why you out here? Yeah, I got kicked out. You got kicked out of this rehab? Yes. Why? Because I got caught smoking three times in my bathroom. What, what were you caught smoking? Cigarette. So guys, you hear it. She was caught. This is a rehab that she's in front of. It's called Amber Rosa. I have brought people here to go in. And she said they kicked her out because she was smoking in their cigarettes. When did they kick you out? Today. She got just kicked now. out today, just now. Wow. Yeah, and, it, and they do allow smoking in there, but it's only certain times of the day. So she said they do allow smoking in there, but only certain time of the day. So now you're out here and, and, and do you apologize for them? Let them know, hey, listen, man, you, I need a second chance. Yes, definitely. And what happened? I did, but they said there's nothing they can do. They're, they're doing an administrative discharge which for smoking. They, some people are saying that's not why they kick you out. Do, do, okay, I'm talking to the lady Even herself. Even though everybody's smoking in there. Is that, tell us God, the God honest truth, right? Is that why you got kicked out because of smoking cigarettes? Yes. So there you have it. She got kicked out because she was smoking cigarettes. That's you're not in her shoes, so you can't tell her what she got kicked out for doing. So I'm so sorry that happened to you. What's your, your plans now? Um, my plan is to um, try to get help and go somewhere else so I can get um, the help that I need. Yeah? Yeah, because like I'm very sick. Um, I've been using for 23 years straight and um, I'm very sick because of using. I um, have like health problems. I've had three strokes. I have seizures disorder now, and I have heart failure. So I have big time health problems. Yeah. And so I could so die any day. See, I'm so sorry, dear. That's that's a tough life, right? Yes. So, do you feel like you are getting enough help? from the system, the American system? Do you feel like they're helping you, the, the, the health department and everybody else? No, I don't feel like, I just feel like I'm just another number to them. Like really just like, I don't feel like, I feel like some of the people in there do actually care about me, but the majority of them only care about themselves. Yeah, I agree They're with so self-absorbed. Huh. So when you go to hospitals, how, how do the hospitals treat you? Um, Sometimes they treat me good, other times they just treat me like I'm a no good junkie and um, nobody and worthless. Uh, and that's horrible and that's what people that work in the healthcare system, you guys that have jobs like that, you took those jobs because you care about people, right? No matter who they are. So act like that and don't be, you know, mistreating people who need help the most. So I'm so sorry that happened to you, alright? Thank you. I'm you so sorry that happened to me too. I mean, I feel bad for myself. Yeah. So now look. It I feel like bad for everybody out there that's like suffering and sick. Mm-hmm. 
And this is why you're gonna go use drugs because you're trying to get clean. You smoke the cigarette because you're stressed out and they kick you out back into the same environment where you're trying to escape from now. Yeah. What's your plans now? My plan now is to finish getting help because I was doing very good where I was at. And then, um, then there was like some incidents with me, like um, I have anger issues. Like I've gotten into a lot of like argumentative fights and like um, I was used to like fighting when I was younger. Like mm -hmm. I would always like just fight somebody. Like even if like, just, just for the hell of it because they said something. Yeah, to you me got a lot of anger, that's why. I have, I'm very defensive. Yeah, because it's how you was raised. You was raised like that, that's why you put up a barricade and you won't let nobody put you down. And you, nobody should put you down because that's how the world is filled with bullies. And Thank we're you. not about that. So let's get off topic and then we'll be done, all right? Okay. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is, I like black. Okay, black, that's nice. What are some of your favorite foods? Um, pizza, spaghetti, um, baked CD, like, um, what else do I like? I like chicken and spaghetti together. Oh, that yeah. sounds like a party in my tummy right yeah. now. <laughs> okay, what's your zodiac sign? Sagittarius. Oh, guys, today is a hit with me. I met two of my Sagittarius friends. <laughs> I'm December 1st, which one are you? Wow. December what? I'm November 28th. Oh, you before me, November, yes. but I'm December 1st. Wow. Yo, shout out to the Sag gang, we yeah. out there. So you're Sag too then? Yeah, December 1st, yeah. That's what's up. When you were a little kid, what do you want to become when you grow up? Um, a lawyer. Oh, that's beautiful, that's nice. Yeah, because I always like to read. Like, oh, that's yeah. nice. I like to read books well, when I was well, younger, but I stopped doing all that. I know, right? Because that's what addiction do. It takes away everything that you love. Mm -hmm. Who are some of your favorite authors? Authors? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, I like that Gone with the Wind book. Oh, that's classic. Yeah, very well, classic. What are some of your favorite movies? Um, Favorite movies? I can't really mention that at the top of my head. I got you. But, I got you. Um, Do you have a favorite band or artist you listen to? Um, I like all kinds of music. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. All right, daytime or nighttime? Which one are you? Are you a daytime person or nighttime person? Uh, daytime usually. Why? Um, because. Uh, the night times usually uh, gets a little like crazy out here gotcha. and there's like lots of predators out there and um, I've been told numerous times to watch out for them yeah. and they always tend to like stick to me yeah. and like a magnet and it's like hard for me to like get them off of me. Gotcha. So do you stay in touch with your friends and your family? No, I don't really, I don't, why, I don't. Why, why, because why you don't? my family gave me up a long time ago for using and I have no friends. So her family gave her up a long time ago for using and she have no friends. So that's why we as friends and family to, you know, our brothers and sisters who are struggling, we cannot do that to them because they need us the most. So I'm sorry your family turned. You have a new family now. We are your family, all right? Thank you. Yeah, we got your back. So if you can, okay, what is one thing that you love most about yourself? I love that I'm honest. It's hard for me to lie. Yeah, Sagittarius, that's us. We are very truthful, yes. truthful people. Yes. And we are blunt and yes. we tell the truth. And that's yes. why a lot of people don't like us because we are truth seekers, you know? Yes. We out mm -hmm. to tell, expose the truth. Yes. So don't never, don't never be afraid to show the truth because Thank the you. truth will set you free, right? Yes. That's awesome. I want to be set free. Right. Okay. Okay. So now, if you can be any animal, what animal will you be? A tiger. A tiger? Okay, yeah. why? Because they're wild and they're just crazy. <laughs> okay, I hear and that. And I like the wild. Nice. So, do you have a spiritual or a religious belief? I believe in a higher power. Okay. Um, but non-Pacific. Got you. So where do you believe you'll go when you die? Where would I go when I die? Yeah, where do you believe you'll go when you die? Um, 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm even dead right now or alive because like I'm here outside with people walking around, but I believe I'm in like a state of purgatory where like I'm somewhere in the middle of life and death. Like, I believe that I'm gonna go sometime, I just don't know when. Got you. But I, I feel like I'm in, like, I'm not cleansed enough for heaven, and I'm not dirty enough for hell. And I don't love the devil, and I, I believe in the higher above, I believe in God. And I believe that if I keep working on myself, that maybe I'll be one day up a, in a place like heaven. Oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. If you were to die tomorrow, God forbid, what would you like to be remembered for? I would like to be remembered for my honesty, my loyalness to people, and um, that I'm good-hearted. That's beautiful. If you, can, if you can travel to any place or country, where would you go? England. Wow. That's where my family comes from. Beautiful. And I still have family out there that I don't even know. That's nice. Yeah. So it's lightning. Oh. So, oh my God! I don't like the zigzag lightning. Oh, it's about to rain it's out about here, to guys. It's about a thunderstorm, I think. Wow, it's about a thunderstorm. So let's hurry up and do this before it start coming down. If you had three wishes in this world, what would your three wishes be? Um, the first wish would be um, I wish that I could fly. Beautiful. Um, second, I wish that I had magical powers. And third, wish that I could be like some kind of superhero with superpower. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. And do you have any kids? I do. Three boys. Three boys. And where are your children? Um, my oldest lives with a friend. Um, my middle son has been in juvie since he was 10, which he's 18 now. And um, my 12-year-old is adopted. Got you. I miss all my kids, so. Yeah, I, I can't imagine you are a mom, you know, and I yeah. can't imagine how it feel not to have your children. And that's why a lot of people continue to keep on using to numb that, that feeling, you know? So yeah. we're done now, right? I just want to cap things off real quick. Okay. What are your short-term goals? Um, short-term goal, um, um, I need to um, get financially stable. Okay. Um, and then once I get financially stable, I want to be able to be able to take care of myself because it's hard for me to take care of myself because of all the health problems I have. And um, I would like to eventually have some kind of like housing and a roof over my head. Right. Elena, her name is Elena. What an E, right? Yeah, with e an E. What an E. Elena, what an E. Okay, Helena, Elena, you know, we wish all those things that you, that you just said come true. What are your long-term goals? Um, long-term, um, to get back in shape and healthy again. That's like, beautiful. because I, I used to be very athletic and um, I have right side weakness right now, but I'm hoping to be able to be athletic again and be able to run again, play sports again, and do all that. Okay, that's beautiful. And what do you look for in a relationship? Um, loyalty. Beautiful. Love and loyalty. Beautiful. So this one would be, there are a lot of people in this world who judge people who are struggling with addiction yeah. because they cannot relate to what you're going through or what you have been through. Mm. What message do you got for the world? Um, just keep on keeping on and everything will work out. Amen. So Elaine, is there anything that you're in need of that we can help you with? Um, I'm in need of everything really, so. As far as what? Everything. I'm gonna try to look for a place to stay for like a shelter or something. Tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah, I hope you do that. So look, I got a bunch of stuff over here that okay. I want to give you. 
before I roll out. Okay. All right. Okay. You going there? That's from the AML family. AML family. Because okay. I feel bad for you. You got kicked out of this. Re you know, you got kicked out of this place today. Yes, I did. And you. <laughs> I hope you find a place. And see, she's trying her best, guys. That's messed up. She's trying. She was Definitely. in rehab. Definitely. In rehab. Trying. And she got kicked out of rehab today. So have you used today? Um, No, I haven't. And she haven't used today neither. So I pray you take that 20 and get something to eat and, you know, do yeah. something good with it, all right? Uh-huh. Don't relapse, Definitely. please. Definitely. I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yes. See how the system works? When people want to get clean, they get put right back out into Yeah. They get put right back out into the in, into, into, into the into the chaos. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and she would love trying to thing. learn something new. Yes. She's trying to learn something new. So what, this is all mine right here? You can go through it and take whatever you it? want. Okay. Yeah, take whatever you want and then I'm all gonna- right. And I'll put back the rest. I'm gonna go down to Kensington next and you know, give the rest to our brothers and sisters. Okay. Yeah. These are cute. Um, See guys, the system is really messed up. They kicked yeah, this lady is. out for smoking a cigarette. Put her right back in the middle of the, in, 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 in the chaos and she's clean. Now, what we call that? What do we call that? That's not humanity. That's not love. That's one wanting to see somebody fail, wanting to see somebody die, wanting to see somebody a part of the statistic. Yeah. That's evil. I don't care if she would have smoked in there. So long as she's in rehab, let her stay there. Don't kick her back out. That's not right. Send me somebody out. said you should go to 63rd shelter, 63rd, the shelter on 63rd Street. 63rd Street? Yeah. Okay. I'll check it out. Yeah, she said she would check it out, the shelter on 63rd Street. If you guys know anywhere, you can help her also to, you know, malfine our brothers and sisters. I can't do everything myself. You guys that got...